Well, hello, everybody. It's been a while since we sort of touched base on what's been going on, and a lot has been going on, obviously, with the uh, Poker Go Cup. New, new for the mantle, right? Um, finally broke through there. Uh, and the unfortunate passing of a friend, Lane Flack. Um, you know, we've got the World Series of Poker going on online with those tournaments. And, of course, what I want to get to first is the international leg on GG Poker that you will be able to play. There's always a bunch of questions that come in on this in terms of, like, how do you do it? So here's your opportunity to, like, listen and get the facts, okay? So if anybody wants to know, like, just point them to this video and, uh, and I'll give you the, 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 the rundown. But most importantly, if, for all the stuff I'm going to share, you have any other questions or whatever, just go to the FAQ. FAQ stands for Frequently Asked Questions. I remember when I first heard FAQ and didn't know what the hell that meant. <laughs> Still duh. And it's like, what if you ask the question, what is an FAQ? Go to the FAQ to find out. Well, but, but, but what is the FAQ? It's the, what, that's where you go to find out what, what about the question. So go to the FAQ um, on GG Poker and you can get all the information. But first and foremost, I get this question a lot. If you're in the U.S. or if you're in a country that doesn't allow, you know, for, uh, you know, GG Poker, can you play? The answer is yes, but only from an eligible country. And you can find a list of those if you're in the U.S., obviously Canada or Mexico or options. I believe travel to Canada is limited right now for Americans until August 7th or so. So Mexico is a decent idea. That's where I will be headed, um, similar to where I was last year. Um, so if you need help with this kind of stuff, again, aside from the uh, FAQ, you can email GG, or you can email, what is it? It's help at ggpoker.com, somewhere here or whatever. You know, you'll figure it out. Um, so one of the other things I want to mention too is like, don't waste, wait to the last minute. Now, when you sign up, this must be done from the eligible country, okay? So don't be like, all right, you know, I'm in Chicago. I'm going to go to Mexico. Don't set up the account in Chicago. Wait until you get to the place, whether it's Mexico or someplace else, that you will be playing from. So then you're going to have to create and verify your account. Um, that might take a little bit, so make sure you're on it. Um, you want to choose the country flag where you're staying, not where you're from, right? So if you are from Chicago, proud American, good for you. But if you're going to be playing from Mexico, let's go with the Mexican flag, okay? Um, past that, uh, you're going to need to show proof of presence required. Like, you know, you might have to prove that you're actually there, right? Uh, in addition to that, provide a picture of your stamped passport, prov proving you are an eligible country, um, Hotel or Airbnb confirmation might be requested, and you send that all through the GG Poker cashier or to help at ggpoker.com. As far as depositing money, the good news is there are a lot of options. U.S. dollars do work. Um, local deposit methods work. Most importantly, and I think the coolest way, and this is the wave of the future, is Bitcoin is accepted. So you can use Bitcoin to play and make your deposits. Um, You'll have to verify the count again, of course, as, as, I, as I said. And then to withdraw, again, they'll work with you, the cashier, and whether or not you want Bitcoin or you want other options uh, available to you. So make sure you check out the details there. Check out the schedule too, because it's pretty cool. The schedule is going to run from August 1st to the 12th. I mean, we kick it off with the $50 buy, and I know everyone's like, oh, $50 buy, and what the hell is going on? But it's going to be a big one, okay? Because it's a million guaranteed. There is various flights leading up to August 1st which give yourself a chance to play. Then, of course, the return of the Millie Maker will be the first, you know, real phase event that I'll be involved in. It's a $1,500, uh, $5 million, $5 million guaranteed. Then some other highlight events. you got event number 11, which is a 10K Super Millions, which is a, you know, flagship event for us, you know, that runs on Sunday and the final tables are on Tuesday. This one's going to have another $5 million guaranteed. Then event number 15, my specialty, the Heads Up, the 10K Heads Up Championship. So obviously I'm the chalk favorite because I've had such an illustrious run in Heads Up tournaments over the last, uh, you know, seven, eight years. I've actually, the streak is broken, so I'm due, right? You know, I mean, I lost the freaking, never mind. I didn't want to, you know who. <laughs> We're going to call them you know who from now on. Uh, and then, of course, there's going to be the $1,000 WSOP GG Masters freeze out, 1K freeze out with a $2 million guarantee. The GG Masters is something that's near and dear to my heart. I was at the, uh, you know, the beginning of like, we were thinking like, what is our Sunday flagship going to be? And I'm like, I like freeze outs. I get it. People want re-entries, big prize pools. That's cool. But I want to create like a big freeze out. And to do that with a $2 million guarantee, I think is pretty ambitious. That's going to require 2,000 plus players in order to hit that guarantee. Uh, so if you are a freeze out fan and you know, like you like the prestige of it, that's the one for you, event number 16. 
Then, of course, event 21 is the 25K buy-in. Super high roller bowl with a 5 million guarantee. This is a whole 5 million, 10 million, 20, all these millions, so much millions. It's going to be huge. So that's got a 5 million guarantee on that. And then the return, of course, of the 5K World Series of Poker online main event champion. Okay, one more time. The World Series of Poker online gg poker main event online online champion okay not to be confused with the main event that will happen later this year live so that's the the ones that i'm looking at as far as that stick out to me um i will be playing probably my first event i'll be playing uh when i arrive there is probably a phase for the money maker and then after that i will be playing the 2500 limit hold'em i mean talk about old school speaking of old school i kind of wanted to before we finish I did a uh, podcast with uh, Eric Denis, who does G- GPI and, uh, of course, the global, you know, global poker greatness, Hin and Mob, all that stuff. He wanted to, you know, so I reminisced, right? And I look back at my history. And you know how I went on this recent run where, like, I lost, like, 10 or 12 heads-up championships or titles. And, of course, Doug Polk, who I also did a poker podcast with recently, you know, he did a video, you know, on my second-place finishes. And I don't think he was... I don't think he was brutal. He just was saying, this is pretty fucking epic. It doesn't, he wasn't saying you suck. That's why you lost. It's just an epic string. So here's the thing. I look back in my history. The first eight times in a tournament that was officially you know, established that I was six-handed, I won. Not second, no thirds, no fifths. Eight wins in a row, right? Crazy start. Limit hold'em, of course. Then in 2002, I went on a streak in a two-month period where five consecutive tournaments that are on the docket there is no caches on there. Five wins. So when I look back at my career, I know that I've had like a lot of good fortune, right? I just happen to have some really unlucky streaks uh, throughout. And, you know, a lot of people point to that as being like, oh, you know. But the thing is, I feel like I'm playing better now than I ever have by a wide margin, right? So on that note, let's go talk about, uh, you know, the recent. Uh, well, so, I mean, I, why are you tweeting your bad mates? You see this tweet, this tweet. And I was just telling you what was actually happening, right? It was very frustrating. Um, I feel like I've gone through a weird streak where when the cards are on their back, and I know you've all experienced this, so I can, I can relate. When the cards are on their back, you, um, you know, just lose a lot. And, I, and that's sort of what I've been going through. And even on the WSOP ones, I feel like whatever. But I, I you can't complain because finally at the Poker Go Cup, it all came together. I bubbled the first event. I had a min cash in another one. I bubbled the first event with like ugly, you know, beats, if you will. And then um, I uh, min cashed. And like, I think I min cashed again. I just kept going out. So finally the 50K comes around and I was able to pull that one out of the hat, beating a nice kid. I really liked this guy. He fit right in, super classy. David Coleman, he had like five or six final tables, pretty impressive. And uh, pulled out all the, the tricks for um, that one. And we're going to share probably going forward, you know, in the old school, new school review. I'm going to share a couple key hands from that one because we're going to go over. Because you're going to see, if you watched it, you probably saw me play some hands that old Daniel wouldn't have played that way. And some of them I lost. Some of them I bluffed my chips off, but that's okay. It's all part of a newer, updated strategy. Then we move on to the very next one, and I basically need third place or better, and I lock up the Poker Go Cup, right? So I'm in there. I'm doing it, you know? Uh, We're hanging in there. We're on the bubble. We we come back on the bubble, you know? And now there's four left. And uh, I just need one more spot because if Sam Soverall wins, my fourth is no good right? If I come third, it doesn't matter if he wins. I still win. So it's very, very crucial. Anyway, I'll tell you a bad beat story. He raised with eights. I went all in with aces. What do you think hit the turn? Oy, freaking eight on the turn. I jumped out of my chair and I lost. So I was pretty dejected because Sam had all the chips and I was like, oh, damn it. That's going to suck. But Kerry Katz, El Jefe, the owner and creator of Poker Go. If you don't have a subscription, make sure you get one. Um, he, ha- he pulled it out, man. He went for it, and he won the damn thing. So I was really proud of him, which meant he won himself. I've never rooted for a billionaire to win a million dollars more than I did that day. So I was able to have a couple drinks, relax. I drank out of that cup, and it was probably dirty, but whatever. I mean, COVID's running around. What's the worst thing that could happen to me, bro? You know what I mean? I'm vaccinated. I'm safe from freaking poker coke cup germs. We'll see. I don't know. So yeah, so that was a really nice accomplishment. I cashed for about a million dollars. And, you know, looking back at my, uh, again, I was going through the hand and mob stuff and looking at my ratings because on Doug's video, it said like W2F, $12 million downswing. I'm like, what? I'm not on a $12 million downswing. But what he was doing was he was saying like for all the second place finishes, had I won, that would be the difference. Because obviously the $1 million one drop uh, that Daniel Coleman beat me in, that was like a difference of seven or eight million right there. 
right? Because I've got 8.7, he got like 15 or 16 or 17, I don't know, something big. Uh, next thing I want to talk about was just the shocking news. I was sitting there on the couch with my wife and I got a text from Jennifer uh, that Lane Flack had passed away. And uh, I, I guess I experienced shock as the emotion. Like, um, you know, I knew, I've known the guy, we go way back. I got stories to tell with Lane that are pretty awesome. Um, go way back and he's helped me out in the past. I've helped him out in the past and, uh, he lived fast. You know what I mean? Like he lived, he always was like in the moment. He was always having fun. That's the one thing I would say about Lane. Like no matter what he was doing, he was all, everything was funny. Like he was just joking about everything. Never took anything too seriously. It was kind of a wild man. Like we, when we were young, we were in and out of money and he just like, I would stress me out. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know what to do. But he's all like, ah, we'll be fine. Da, 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 da. You know, I'm like, how? What are we going to do, bro? We just went broke playing in this game. And he found a way. You know, he found a way. I remember one time, specifically, like I went broke. I don't know how many years ago this was, in my 20s. And uh, I was like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have any money. I didn't really have any resources to borrow or anything like that. So Lane was my buddy. And I remember he came and picked me up and I was sitting on a curb. And he always tells it like extra. You know, I was like, yeah, I got him sitting in the street laying on a, you know, on a curb right there. And uh, he fixed me up with Ted Forrest, who staked him, and Ted gave me a little staking deal, and I was able to go on a nice run for him and, and make some money. But that wouldn't have been possible, you know, without Lane helping me out. Uh, and as I said, you know, Lane had, he had his demons too, like a lot of people do. And I don't want to get too personal about that kind of stuff. I just, I know that as far as the public record, he's, he passed in his sleep. And uh, as you can see from the outpouring on Twitter, that it was all positive like nobody had a bad thing to say and everyone kind of echoed the same sentiment that like he was just a fun guy to be around and I, I i i spent a lot of time with him growing up here in vegas he was one of my closer friends growing up along with you know kirk morrison we used to run around playing in la here in vegas and you know different places and uh we had a very different approach to like poker and life you know but I, there's a lot i learned from him you know in his just sort of like uh willingness to go for it in all spots in all in both in life and poker and, you know, just living with it in the moment. He was never worried. Well, he was never too worried about the future. You know, he was always like, it'll be fine. It'll take care of itself. But I would say this, as he aged, we all do. And we started talking a little bit more in the last year or so. He matured as well, you know? And it's like, so the shocking part for me was the lane of old, like in his 20s, I wouldn't have been surprised to hear a story like that. You know, like he passed away suddenly, right? That, but now that he's more mature and, you know, he was 52. He seemed more at peace and just was living like a, you know, a healthy lifestyle for the most part, you know? So that was really a shocker and sad because it felt like, uh, I don't know, it felt like there was another chapter to be written. So just RIP to Lane Flack and uh, his daughter Haley and, you know, his family. Condolences to them. I remember he loved Haley deeply. If you're watching Haley, he really did. And I remember playing with Haley at his house. Lane Flack was the only person to get my mother to play poker because we used to spend time with them because... We'd spend Thanksgiving with Haley and Lane and things like that. My mom would cook, of course, because that's what she did. When Lane won, like, a couple bracelets, guess who cooked for that year? My mom. When Phil Ivey won three bracelets, guess who cooked? My mom. She had lucky cooking. But he got her to play poker. She didn't know what she was doing. But, like, he just made it a comfortable environment for her to have fun. And, again, that's, like, a sentiment of just the, the man that he was. He was just a fun guy to be around. Um, always made people feeling... He made people, like, he was that guy that entered the room and, like, you felt better after, you know? Just, just, that's the kind of legacy that you want to live, you want to leave in this world, I would imagine. Okay, so as for me, y'all, uh, I will be grinding these WSOP.com events. I'm going to try maybe to get a test stream in. I don't know, a couple of them see here and there. But during the GG Poker leg of it, I will be in Cabo, Mexico. Not Cabo, I'll be in Cabo, whatever. Come find me. So step to you. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention about come find me? So I got this contender shirt on, right? Which you can buy contenders clothing at contendersclothing.com. And I recently caught up on Cobra Kai. Okay. So if you've caught up on Cobra Kai, you'll recognize this bad boy right here. Does that show up good in the camera there, Christian? Yep. <laughs> Eagle Fang Karate. So those of you that don't know what that is, check out Cobra Kai. Highly recommend the series. Check out contenders clothing. We got all kinds of new stuff. Uh, new line of Cobra Kai stuff as well. So yeah, stream schedule, um, the events, it's going to be kind of nice. Like it's not overwhelming, which I'm appreciative of for the GG series. I'll have some time to, you know, be on the beach, do some things in Cabo, but essentially what the schedule is going to look like is it looks like there's Sunday events, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. 
okay? In between that, every week, there's always those day one phase events. So my plan is to stream during the week, um, probably Saturday as well. So the stream schedule for me will likely be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Or actually, you know what? I'll probably Monday, went all during the week. The only day I'm not streaming basically is going to be Sunday because Sunday is usually hectic. You've got multiple events and, uh, you know, it's an intense grind. So it's hard for me to stream and do that. But I will likely stream from beginning to end. Uh, and you can check those out right here on the YouTube channel, on Twitch, on freaking all the things, man. My guy sets it up where it goes out to everything. And I try to get to as many comments as possible. One thing I didn't touch on uh, that I... Yeah, so I lost to Phil Hellmuth <laughs> three times. It happened. It did. That's, that's all I got. <laughs> Anyways, if you were expecting like a long, you know, but no, I can't. I had to actually get off Twitter for a week. It was the smartest thing I ever did because I didn't want to hear it from people because I talked a lot of shit and I talked a lot of smack, right? So if you talk a lot of shit and you talk a lot of smack and you come out 0 and 3, you got to jump from Twitter because otherwise you might jump for real. Anyways, peace, y'all. See you in Cabo.